Hey, Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, broke a thumb to you, hopefully, elect. This is just a real quick, man. Um, because basically, I think I'm going to title this somewhere along the lines of how we need to be on point and we need to be on point and we need to be fervent for you how about you shy you know because for one um you know like there's a saying if it's not one thing it's another right because it just seems like mostly for our people um it just seems like you know we we can't catch a break you know again you know if it's, if it's not one thing it's another well, you see, the Lord purposely has it set up that way because, for one, you know, you know um, we are in captivity. So with that being said, we can't get comfortable in captivity. All right. Um, I put it like this, because, um, again, the, the Lord keeps us in, you know, that is uh, he, he, he keeps us in a constant state of mind to where he's constantly reminding us that this is not our rest. All right. And again, being that we're in captivity, um, we can't get comfortable nor complacent here. And it's like, I'll just use this as an example. Um, if, let's just say, Esau really gave our people reparations, right? Um, and gave us land, right? And gave us all these other things. Well, Jake... They would establish themselves in this place. They wouldn't feel the need to, you know, uh, basically be kingdom minded. Because, again, this is why the Lord has us in this position to keep us in the, you know. Because uh, uh, basically, again, we need to be kingdom minded. All right. Because, again, this is not our rest, you know. And if we had it like that, if, if everything was all good, then pretty much we wouldn't need salvation. Because, like I said, the Lord keeps us in a mind to where, uh, you know, we seek salvation, man. You see. And again, with that being said, this is why, you know, hey, um, before I get that, I'm going to get this because this is what really um, <sighs> motivated me to do this. Second Corinthians chapter two. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. <sighs> 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. It says, unless I should be exalted above measure time. Excuse me. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given me. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffer me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. You see, so, um, well, matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 8. It says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it may depart from me. All right? Um, because no matter how bad our people, no matter how bad they want to win the lotto, all right? Or no matter how, many, how bad they want to get certain things, ultimately the Lord knows what's best. All right? And again, uh, for the most part, if we if we got these things, then... For the most part, we could lose focus on the mission. You see, the Lord keeps us on a He keeps us on a fine line. Um, it might be in the same chapter. Or not. Um, but it, the Apostle Paul, he also said that um I know how to abound. I know how to abound with much and to to, to be abased. Roughly paraphrasing it. Because there was times where Apostle Paul he had more than what he needed, and there was there was times when Apostle Paul he had you know he didn't he was basically broke you know, dead broke, so to say. You see, and again because you know we're dealing with a power that he he deals with balance, so the Lord keeps us in that 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 he keeps us in that on that fine line. All right, sometimes we may get a little more than you know what we are used to having. And sometimes, you know, we we're we're just you know we're in need or whatever the case may be. But nevertheless, it's all about balance. And again, the Lord has it set up that way strategically to keep us in a position or keep us in a mind frame <laughs> to constantly remind us that this is not our rest. 
all right? <sighs> he gives us enough just, just to where we can, you know, take care of our daily responsibilities and whatnot, all right? And and, and it's better that way because, like I said, if, if let's say, we you know, if we hit the lotter lottery, we can deny it if we want. But if we hit the lottery, hey, you know, hey, you, you know, we hit the lottery, you, you know, you, you, you're, uh, I'll, just, I'll just say, man, you know, you'll, you'll, that, um, that, that fervency, you know, you won't be as focused if you, if you hit the lottery, you know, and like I said, we could den deny it if you want, but, you know, just, let's just be honest, you know, if you, if you hit the lottery, then, you know, um, um, more than likely, man, you know, it, it'll, it'll, it, it could take you out the truth, you see, and this is why, again, the Lord doesn't give us abundance on this side for the most part, all right, because again, we need to constantly be reminded that this is not our rest. So the Lord has us in this, in this position, all right, to, 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 to keep us on point, man, you know, to keep us focused, man, to keep us sharp, to keep us fervent, you know, to keep us on fire, all right, because we want to get the hell up out of here, man, we're, you know, and, and that's how it's, that's how it needs to be. All right. We, you know, we need to be to a point where we just, we're ready to go and we're ready to, we're ready to go yesterday, man. You know, we're eager to get out of this place. And again, that's how the Lord, that's how it's supposed to be. You see? So this is why, you know, brothers and sisters deal with certain different affirmities because a point I wanted to get out of that verse, it talks about that, that it said, Apostle Paul said there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now, uh, whatever that, 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 you know. Uh, 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 whatever Apostle Paul was going through, whether it's that actual ailment or, or whatever the case may be, all right. Nevertheless, we all have that thorn in the flesh. We all have that thing, all right. That's that's pretty much plaguing us to keep us humble. Because, a matter of fact, I'm gonna read the verse again. It says, "Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation." Yeah, because you know the Apostle Paul, he you know he a hey, the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord was dealing with him directly. All right. And with this truth, wisdom, knowledge and understanding, a lot of Jake makes the mistake of thinking highly of themselves. When in scriptures talk about the more we grow in this in this wisdom, knowledge and understanding, the more humble we're supposed to be. Because it's easy to get proud and, and puffed up when you have this truth, when you have this, you know, when you have these revelations, this, you know, happens all the time. And a lot of these guys that come into the truth, they uh, <clears throat> may watch a diff bunch of different groups, different camps, may think that they know something and put themselves on a pedestal well you see we need to be humble all right so this is why again the lord keeps us in this position to where um you know whatever it is might, might be financial might be women whatever the case may be all right the lord keeps that thorn in our flesh to, to again constantly remind us that this is not our rest all right and again with that being said hey you know where we're you know we could be more focused you know because a lot of these things man uh believe it or not could be distractions like i said you win the lottery hey oh you can win the lottery man and that could be distraction and it, it can end up taking you out the truth so this is why you know like i said the lord gives us just enough of what we need all right <clears throat> our daily bread as it tells you in the matthews the sixth chapter going into the our father's prayer right you know give us this day our daily bread you know all we need is meat that is sufficient for us <laughs> all we need is that which is sufficient for us to get us by day to day man we don't need you know, we don't need all the extravagant things, not on this side. All right. So, you know, the Lord keeps us in a humble state. He keeps us, you know, he has to humble us because, again, you know, we need to be focused. We need to be sharp, fervent. All right. So going to Romans chapter 12. <laughs> Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. It says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So you see, like I said, a lot of these things that we, you know, a lot of Jake, they ask for, they might want, they might want the Isaiah 4 on 1, you know, they might want, to, want the multiple women, the multiple wives. But hey, like I said, a woman that could be a stumbling block, all these things that Jake desires, getting a big house or getting a Hellcat or whatever, a lot of these things, they could be stumbling blocks and it can deter us from doing this work and serving the Lord, man, you know, and again, with that comes being comfortable and complacent, all right? We're not as really as focused on the uh, the salvation as we should be, you know. You see, man. So this is why, you know, like you know, we, we pray for certain things, and the Lord doesn't give it to us because it's not the time for it. You see, everything that we sacrifice on the side, because it is a sacrifice. All right, this is a sacrifice. 
Everything that we sacrifice on the side, hey, the Lord told the disciples, everything that you lose on this side, you're going to get it back. All right, a hundredfold. So don't worry about it right now, man. All right, focus on the mission and, you know, focus focus on the goal, man, the end game, which is salvation, which is, which is the kingdom. All right. You see, so this is why, again, the Lord keeps us in a position to where we have to be on point for the Lord. We have to be fervent. We have to be hot. We have to be on fire for Yahweh Shema Shah. Because how much closer are we? You know, where as it tells you in Romans, um, I think it's the next chapter, 13 and 11, right? <sighs> Being that our salvation is nearer than what we believe. Matter of fact, I'll just go to it. Revelation, um, I'm sorry, Romans. <laughs> Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. <sighs> For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. You see? And again, all these distractions, you know, it could lead you, it could deter you from, um, you know, uh, uh, it, could, it could deter your focus. All right? Because again, we're that much more closer now more than ever. You know? And that's why we need to be on fire. We need to be on point now more than ever. All right? Because being that we're so close, man, it would be a shame. <sighs> To give it all up, man. It will be a shame to lose your spot, man. To, to lose salvation over a woman, over money, over a job, whatever the case may be. You see? So knowing that, you know, this is the time, you know? Because, hey, the, the tall tale signs are there. All right? How do we know and why do we believe that this is the time? Because the tall tale signs are there. All right? So this is not the time to be a slugger, man. It's not the time to be in slumber, sleep, docile, comfortable, complacent. All right, this is not the time to be slothful, man. This is now the time now more than ever to be on point and fervent for you. How about Shema Washai? <sighs> you see? I'm going to get this just because, um, what is that, Judges, I think. <sighs> because, again, we need to be on point. Here it is. What does Scripture say? Enduring hardness as a uh, as a soldier for Yahweh Shai. Well, if you're paraphrasing, right? <sighs> You see, because, hey, we're at war right now. You know, we're at a spiritual war, you know. Um, we're, we're uh, spiritually, we're at war, all right. And then, you know, a soldier at war, you know, he's he's focused on the mission. He's focused on the enemies trying to take him out, you know. You see, when a soldier's on the battlefield, man, he's not focused on, you know, the woman. He's not focused on anything else but, you know, uh, what's in front of him, man. And this is, this is how we got to be because, again, we're at war, all right. I'm going to read this in Judges chapter 7. This is why, again, man, we need to be on point. We need to be on point. <sighs> Judges chapter 7. I'll just start off verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harad, so that the host of the Midianites <sighs> were on the north side of them, by the hill of Mori in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee, there are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine only hand hath saved me. <laughs> <laughs> now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, <laughs> let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. So you see, and that's another thing, man. All right. This purification process that we're going through, because, you know, growing up in here in America, this captivity, man, it teaches us to be straight up bitch made, man. It, 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 it teaches us to be bitches, you know, and this purification pro process is removing that bitchness out of us, you know. And it, again, you know, uh, we're being uh, trained up, like I said, to be soldiers for your how about Shema Shai. All right, we're trained, being trained up to be a, a, a men, real men. You see, because the Lord doesn't have time for that, for that scared weak. He doesn't have time for that feeble mind. He doesn't have time for all that. You see, um, it says in their return of verse four. Um, because you know, the scriptures tell you, man, the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear, right? Because you know, Jay gonna make excuses. Um, you know, why did you know they don't? Do you know videos or or 
you know, go out there on the highways and byways, or, you know, my job, or my boss might see me and I might get fired. You see, we, the Lord doesn't have time for all that. All right. It says, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee. The same shall go with thee. And whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee. The same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Because you see, if you could just picture this, um, you know, uh, uh, um, 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 those that are drinking the water, uh, uh, um, well, let me just read it again. It says, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, right? So basically, if you could picture this, all right, because, you know, you can see a lot of this like in the animal kingdom, you know, because, hey, that 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 uh, um, that um, that animal kingdom is it's a brutal. It's a brutal world. You know, it's a brutal place. You know, if you watch, if you, you see these videos, man, you might have the, 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 the gazelle or, or the zebra or even, a, you know, top predators like, you know, uh, tigers and, and cheetahs. Right. Come up to the waterbed, you know, to, to you know, drink some water. But you won't see them in a in this in this you know comfortable state to where oh you know I'm just gonna you know have a sip of water and nothing's gonna happen no oh, man you know for the most part when you see these type of <sighs> when you watch these videos man and these animals man when they're drinking drinking their water man you know hey they're on point you know because hey danger is on all sides man you know whether it be an alligator come up from the water or just you know some top predator a lion come out of nowhere you see. And, you know, pretty much every little sound or movement, hey, you see, you know, the, the animals, it's, it's ready to dip, you know, you see, and that's how we have to be on point. All right. Circumspect, aware. All right. Because, again, we're on the we're, 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 uh, we we are at war right now, man. You see, and this is why, again, we need to be on point. We don't need to be like these people here. When you read on, it says it says. um, It says. It says, likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink. So you see, all those that bowed down their knees to drink, um, you know, hey, they weren't they were on point. Just like the animals on the waterbed. Like I said, you don't see a zebra just, just coming up to the waterbed and just, oh, I'm just going to have a sip of water. You know, I'm just going to ignore all this danger. No, man. You see? Um, you see, man? Where we are, we're supposed to be on point like those that... Uh, 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 lap of the water with his tongue like a dog all right on point uh, aware circumspect alert you see and this is how we ought to be for you how about you shy man on point and fervent <sighs> on fire because again the lord he's not looking for no no my, my, i'll just get it he ain't looking for no lukewarm nigga man <sighs> in revelation chapter three <sighs> Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So you see, the Lord doesn't have no time for no bitch maid in between, making excuses. I got to spend time with my woman. All right. The scripture saying be in, uh, um, it's in, it's in, in season and out of season. All right. <laughs> You know, there's no time to take off, man. And like I said, especially now that being that we are so close, this is a time now more than ever to be on point, fervent and hot for your how about your mouth shine. Because, again, you're either going to be cold or hot. There is no lukewarm. If you're lukewarm, you might as well be if you if you're lukewarm, you know, in between and whatnot. Right. Today, you're just going to be spewed out. All right. The Lord has no purpose for you. You see, so we ought to be on hot, on fire, fervent. On point for you, how about Shimon Shine, man? You see, um, I'm gonna get this. <sighs> because again, you know, the Lord keeps us in this position, going back to what I read in 2 Corinthians 12, right? That thorn in the flesh, you see, <sighs> the Lord keeps us in this position to where we're just like, man, again, how much long, man? How, how long we gotta deal with this shit? It's just, you know, it's just, like I said, if it's not one thing, it's another. 
And the Lord keeps us in that state of, you know, constantly reminding us, all right, that this is not our rest. You know, the Lord, you know, he's strategically doing that, but it's not for our demise. You know, the Lord's not just some bully, all right, that he's just picking on us. Uh, you, you know, no, the, for one, the Lord is dealing with us as sons and a real father. He chastises his son. All right. He puts the rod on him. And this is what the Lord is doing. <laughs> all right. And that goes into a different things such as, you know, the Lord is raising us up to be kings and priests, judges. All right. You see, and, you know, you know, that, that goes into a lot, but just sticking to the point here, man. All right. <laughs> You see, again, we can't be in a, in a laxist days ago, comfortable, complacent attitude, you know, because, again, you know, hey, you're, you're going to end up falling out the truth, man. You're going to lose focus, you know. So I'm going to read this in 2 Corinthians 4 in verse 8. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. And that's not what I wanted, but nevertheless, it's good. All right. <sighs> You know, because again, you know, you know, we're cast down where we're, you know, uh, 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 persecuted. All right. But not, for, but not forsaken. Right. Because it seems like that, you know, it just seems like the Lord's just picking on me, man. It just, it just seems like the Lord, he don't love me. He ain't dealing with me, you know, but it's, it's quite the opposite. Right. Um, cause Hey, if everything's going all smooth, man, and everything is just all good all the time, then you better be worried, you know, because in this truth, Hey, you know, if, if everything is going all smooth all the time, the Lord's not dealing with you, point blank, period. <laughs> all right? Because, <laughs> again, the Lord is dealing with us as sons. He's chastening us as sons. All right? Now, the chastening doesn't hurt, but nevertheless, it's not for our complete destruction. All right? As I said, it said cast down but not destroyed. It's not for our complete demise. All right? You see? Because, again, we have to be in a humble state, man. You know, and then, uh, like I've been saying, it's just that state of mind to where... You know, we need to be constantly reminded that, you know, hey, this is not our rest. Focus on salvation. Focus on the kingdom. All right. You see, man. So, yeah, man, you know, hopefully this is edifying. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bashim Shai, Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh Bashim Shai, broke a thumb to you. Hopefully elect. Lord's willing to next time. Shalom.